G'day folks, well, for this afternoon's mini teardown we have the, well I guess you'd call it a head unit for a cockpit voice recorder. Uh, I was actually searching for the real complete voice recorder on eBay and came up blank at least for affordable ones. People seem to think they're made out of gold with the prices they're charging. But uh, I decided to pick this up. It was about 25 bucks from uh, this bloke here, Lee. Um, all up it was about $55 shipped to my door from Arizona. Um, as the website says, Aircraft Boneyard. Uh, he's got lots of cool items for sale on eBay. I'd highly recommend having a look because even if you can't afford them, there's still some fascinating looking gear on there. Uh, obviously if you can't afford them, don't bid, but uh, there are numerous companies selling uh, components on eBay. Some of them are really high price for unworthy or uncertified stuff, but things like this, um, this guy has them really cheap. This was like 25 bucks, so well worth it. Uh, there are other people selling the same unit, sometimes in worse condition for a lot more. Personally, I think they're just dreaming. They're probably people that can afford to sit on it and relist it, whereas this guy's obviously got a uh, surplus business, so turnover is key. And I'm in the same boat. I, if I was running surplus day in, day out, I'd rather have charge less and move more rather than uh, sitting on something and charging a thousand bucks. I saw one of these on there for a thousand bucks. I can't remember if it was certified or not. I have a feeling it wasn't. And the person who was selling it was just dreaming. It's like, nah, let's look somewhere else. And sure enough, you can pick them up really cheap. It almost fits in a DIN size, single DIN head unit slot. I tried, looked at fitting it in one of the RAV4s, but it won't fit in a DIN slot. It's just that little bit higher. I could mount it up on the dash, but then I'd have to make brackets and drill holes in the uh, plastic dashboard, and I really don't want to do that. So anyway, as it says, this is the cockpit voice recorder. I guess the um, interface unit and microphone. The microphone is removable to a degree. The wiring's a bit damaged and one of the wires is broken off. But uh, apart from a bit of wear and tear in here, it's definitely fixable and hopefully usable for something. I'd really like to use this somewhere. Either mount it on the wall with the PCs or put it in the car somewhere. I want to get dash cams for all my vehicles, so it might be a neat little... Uh, like just desolder the wires, go into all the controls and actually use it to uh, operate a dash cam and cabin microphone or something. Could be a bit of fun. So yeah, big multi-pin connector on the back. I didn't get the cap for it or anything like that, if it even comes with a uh, cap like the flight recorder does. The uh, F800 flight data recorder that I've got has a blanking cap over the uh, terminal on the front of it, but I'd probably just blank that off with a uh, black plastic cap and run my own cable out of the box somewhere else if I modified this. There are plenty around so there's no harm in modifying it for something cool. You can also plug a headset in. It's a standard quarter inch plug. The meter that's on it, I'm guessing it's for testing the decibel levels. You hold down test and uh, if um, or an operator would hold down test while the uh, pilot and the co-pilot and the engineer are talking and if it shows good then obviously it's probably picking up enough enough volume to record to tape and get a good reading that's my guess I don't know I haven't got the manual for this but it's odd that they've got an erase button on there because you'd think something as important as a flight recorder particularly where um, crash data comes into it after a hijacking if I was hijacking the plane the first thing I'd do is wipe the flight data recorder or the flight cockpit voice recorder before um, blowing the plane up. It seems a bit odd to actually have an erase button on there but I guess back then it wasn't such a big thing. So this is a fairly old item. It's made in 79. These days it's probably very secure which I'd hope. Everything that gets recorded on tape stays on tape until a time when the tape loops back or in this case it's now digital. It's like an SD, um, it's like a flash chip inside a potted epoxy brick inside a much bigger uh, fireproof and impact proof housing uh, but the old tape ones like this one it um, obviously it must wipe the tape or something so yeah pretty good um, interesting sticker on here avionicszone.com it's a Honeywell legacy product I'm guessing this was refurbished by Honeywell 
and then sold at one point and then taken out of service again. That's all I'm guessing. The plane it was probably replaced in the aircraft a couple of years before it was taken out of service completely and sent to the boneyard. And uh, that was probably a sticker from uh, recertification. So yeah, uncertified product. Let's open it up and have a look what's inside. And it's a closer up of the label. Yeah, control unit, that's what they call it. Head unit, control unit. Model A152. Okay. A few, a few more components inside than I expected. There's a little board in there. No integrated circuits, a lot of very old style uh, componentry though. Metal case transistors. Uh, various capacitors and things. Like maybe high end uh, electrolytic. I'm not too sure the silver ones I'm referring to. These, That one there says Sprague uh, 0.33 plus or minus 10 percent 200 volts DC. Uh, that one also says Sprague 0 0.022 plus or minus 10 percent. Yeah. This is a nice very stiff foam block for the microphone to sit in, a bit of dampening. That's the wire that's broken off the back of it, not unrepairable because I can see a stub sticking out there. I'll just have to scrape some of that epoxy potting back and uh, solder him back on again. Interesting to see what kind of microphone this is. They've heat shrunk the end back on because it's loose, but it's come loose again so I might actually split that and just see what's going on in the business end. I can always heat shrink it again, but underside nothing special. Revision one mod three, yeah, very nicely, but nicely made board. I'll take these screws out. If there's enough wire length on it, I'll actually lift it out. There we go. Get a slightly better look at it. All capacitors seem to be marked Sprague capacitors. Um, a little 6 volt cap there. That's 60 microfarad, 6 volt. Small trimmer pot. Uh, 3 wire, could be a variable resistor. Yeah, interesting. Avionics is definitely well made. Everything's hand tied, all the wires are hand tied in there. No cable ties or quick stuff, it's actually done, well, it could be done by machine. Uh, I think they call it lacing actually, cable wire lacing. So anyway, that's about it. Let's, uh, let's see what's under this heat shrink. I'm curious as to how, why the top's so loose and whether or not any wires are broken off in here between the, the top and bot the main body. Yeah, I see what's happened here, there's a rubber vibration dampener between the actual pickup assembly and the body and it's all degraded and fallen apart yeah it doesn't want to come off that disc in the back there is actually loose but it doesn't just slide through it, it hits a bit of resistance and then stops and I'm not going to pull on it too hard so yeah I think the microphone might be a bit sad but even as a static display item this thing's really nice if I can find a not decent way to stick this back together again without the heat shrink that will look really good. Yeah, not bad. Well worth the money, I can tell you now. So, uh, that pretty much concludes it. I'm not going to tear it down anymore. Do like little mechanical switches. <laughs> but yeah, I was at boneyard2u.com. Go and check it out, it's got some cool stuff. Thanks for watching.